This is this is salvation. Yeshua is salvation. Salvation is the act of God saving his people from sin and the consequences of sin. The consequences of sin, they are death and separation from God. In Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17, the Most High, he put Adam and Eve in the garden and he said the following, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Sin brought on death, and death was immediate. When Adam and Eve sinned, they immediately became separated from God, and death immediately set in. Death, it starts with separation from God. Then death starts to manifest itself in the physical process of decay. Adam and Eve, they started to decay. They started getting old and aging is a process of decaying. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, we read of the first reference to salvation where God, he makes reference to a savior that will destroy the enemy by being bruised by the enemy, thereby saving humanity. Genesis 3:15. it reads, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The enmity placed between both seas is a continuous hatred, hostility, and violence. This verse, it let us know that there are two seas on earth, and the Most High, He will put enmity between both seas. This verse, it also let us know that God already had a plan for salvation. Genesis 3.15 It makes reference to the serpent and it says the serpent has seed on earth. The verse also mentions the woman and it says the woman she has seed on earth. This verse goes on to mention another person, a male figure that would bruise the head of the serpent, and the serpent, it will bruise the heel of this male figure. This male figure, this is the savior, the savior of the woman and her seed. The male figure, he is prophesied to do two things to crush the serpent and to save the woman and her seed. Thus salvation, it involves destroying the enemy. Then delivering the oppressed, the male figure that is prophesied this is Yahshua.
the Hebrew word for salvation is Yahshua. Yahshua, this Hebrew word, it appears four times in the Torah. It appears in Genesis chapter 49 verse 18, in Exodus chapter 14 verse 13, in Exodus chapter 15 verse 2, and in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 15. The Hebrew word for salvation is the name Yahshua. Thus, salvation is Yahshua, and Yahshua is salvation. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Peter, he says the following, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The black man and the black woman, they must realize, know, and understand that salvation is Yahshua, and Yahshua is salvation. The Hebrew word for salvation, it is Yahshua. This is Jesus. This is sacrilege, and it's an abomination to the Most High to say that Jesus has blonde straight hair, blue eyes, white pale skin. This is to say that Jesus suffers from many genetic mutations, and he descends from the interbreeding of the fallen angels. And this is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, a genetically mutated pale-skinned Jesus is an abomination to God. Jesus cannot save anyone, and Jesus never existed. There is no one in history that was called Jesus. Jesus was made up in the 18th century AD. cover-up. The cover-up of the accomplishments of black people. Ignore. Just refuse to publish any facts of African history that don't go along with our racial theories. We need to create a religious and a scientific doctrine so that uh, African slavery won't appear that bad after all. What we need to do is flood the world with new African histories that contain our European perspectives only. Start renaming people and places. Replace African names with Arabic and European names. 
This will disguise their true black identity. Let's change the criteria for defining race. For example, one drop of Negro blood in America makes you a Negro, no matter how light the skin. Yes, and when we're pointing ancient African history, reverse the standard. No matter how dark the skin, woolly the hair, or thick the lips, you don't have to be a Negro. When black contribution to civilization is too obvious, let's find a way to attribute it to outside white influences. When all the ancient historians contradict your theory, we'll just discredit them. Salvation. Salvation is not for the fallen angels, and salvation is not for the seed of the fallen angels. The seed of the fallen angels. This is the Caucasian. Hence salvation. It is not for the Caucasian. The Caucasian. He is not defined by the Caucasus Mountains. The Caucasian is defined by his genetic mutations. The Caucasian is not just white. He comes in various shades of pigmentation. There are Caucasians with black skin and straight hair. There are Caucasians with tan pigmentation and straight hair. There are Caucasians that are lily white with straight hair. These all are Caucasians because they all have genetic mutations. Their straight hair it is a genetic mutation of the TCHH gene and their white skin. It is a genetic mutation of the SLC24A5 gene. The Caucasians with black and brown skin, they are not the same as the black man and black woman. The black and brown skin of Caucasians, this is from field melanin. And field melanin, it is a genetic mutation of the melanocortin 1 receptor gene. The black and brown skin of the black man and black woman, that is from eumelanin. Eumelanin is found in the earth and the universe. The Caucasian is demon seed. He descends from the fallen angels. The Caucasian is not the image of God, and he was not created by God. The Caucasian is the image of the fallen angels. British Israelism. This was the main culprit behind the creation of Jesus and Christianity in the 1800s AD. Yahshua, he is black, but Jesus, he is a Caucasian albino that suffers from OCA 1 to 7. It is very important that the black man and black woman know that Jesus is an albino that suffers from many genetic mutations. The Caucasian, he made Jesus to look like himself, which is an albino with genetic mutations. Jesus is described as having blonde hair, but blonde hair, it is a genetic mutation of the KIT ligand gene. There are 333 diseases associated with the KIT ligand gene mutation. Jesus is described as having white and pale skin. However, white skin, it is a genetic mutation of the SLC24A5 gene. There are 93 diseases associated with the SLC24A5 gene mutation. Jesus is described as having blue eyes. However, blue eyes, this is a genetic mutation of the OCA2 gene. There are 240 diseases associated with the OCA2 gene mutation. The mythological Jesus created by the Caucasian in the 1800s, he is very sick and has many genetic mutations. Hence, he cannot save anyone, but he himself, he is in need of salvation and healing.
the 144,000. They are mentioned in Revelations chapter 7 and chapter 14. The 144,000. They have the seal of God in their foreheads. And the seal of God, this is the Father's name written in their foreheads. The 144,000. They consist of 12,000 people from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. This means the 144,000, they are black. They are not Caucasian albinos. These are black people from the 12 tribes of Israel. The 144,000, they are virgins. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 4, John, he says the following, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Next description of the 144,000 is that of first fruits. The 144,000, they are the first fruits unto God, redeemed from the earth. Hence the 144,000, they are the first fruits of the harvest, that is, they are the first to be saved. This means the 144,000, they are black Hebrews that live in the first and second centuries AD who believe in the death and resurrection of Yahshua. In Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 16, God called Israel an olive tree. Hence the olive tree in Revelations, it does not refer to an individual, but to a group of people, which are Hebrews that descend from Jacob. They are the olive tree mentioned in Revelation. Revelation says there are two olive trees and this refers to what is written in Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15. The reason for two witnesses comes from scripture. In Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15, it says the following, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Thus in Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15, this passage, it let us know the reason for two witnesses, which is to give a true testimony, because in the mouth of two witnesses shall the matter be established. The Two Candlesticks the identity of the two candlesticks is revealed by the seven golden lampstands that refer to the seven churches mentioned in Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3. The two witnesses, this refers to the kingdom of Israel and it was required by Hebrew law that there be two witnesses for truth and for confirmation of testimony so that every word can be established. The two witnesses are said to wear sackcloth as their clothing. This refers to the message that they will speak, a message of repentance. The two witnesses, they prophesy while the holy city, which is Jerusalem, they prophesy while the holy city is being trampled on. This is very important because it gives us a time frame when the two witnesses will arrive. In Revelations chapter 11 verse 2, it says the following, But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. The holy city is Jerusalem, and it is being trampled on 
for three and a half years. This means Jerusalem is still in existence. It is a city. It has not been destroyed yet. Thus Jerusalem is still a city not destroyed. And the two witnesses, they are said to prophesy next to the holy city. Now we know that the event of the two witnesses has already happened a long time ago. The two witnesses, they are not a future event. It is a past event during the time when Jerusalem was still a city, not destroyed. The event of the two witnesses, this occurred after John wrote the book of Revelations and it occurred before the 70 AD destruction of Jerusalem. The lampstand, this is a reference to believers who believe in the death and resurrection of Yahshua. These are the great multitude mentioned in Revelations. The olive tree, this is a reference to believers who are the first fruits of saved people and from the 12 tribes of Israel.